TV's very own Mr. Magic, Jonathan Ross. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Penn and Teller Fool Us, where our hopeful performers go head to head with two of the greatest magicians to be found outside of Hogwarts. Tonight, <laughs> like the existence of Mrs. Louis Walsh, we aim to show you things you didn't think possible. <laughs> Explain that to the kids later. Now, <laughs> tonight, our performers will try to win a chance to play Vegas by fooling two legends who have been performing together for over 35 years. That's incredible, isn't it? 35 years. That's got to have put a strain on any relationship. Teller obviously ran out of things to say back in 1982. <laughs> I like to think of them as dastardly and mutely. Here they are. It's Penn and Teller! <laughs> We know you don't really want to be fooled, but part of you, you do want to be fooled. Well, no, part we of you... do, we absolutely do. I mean, you don't get into magic unless you love that feeling. That's what brings you into it. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of pressure, but someone doing a really great trick, we have no idea how it's done, that's magic. So you're ready to be confounded and bamboozled and hopefully tricked and made to look small and silly in front of everyone? Yeah, we'll make it as hard as we can okay. for them. Ladies and gentlemen, Penn and Teller, take your seats, gentlemen. <laughs> If you're sitting comfortably, you've got the best seats in the house, you're ready to go. Let's get started. Let's meet our first contender. Daniel Kramer. I'm Daniel Kramer, I'm 15 years old, and I'm a magician from North London. I don't know where the magic desire comes from, where Daniel gets it from. Um, he's loved doing magic for a long time. I just love magic, really. I'm not really into magic, really, but um, it keeps me out of the way, I guess. I like to do a trick, and then every now and then I just break out into a joke. Dad. Hello, Dad. I get all of my gossip from my ketchup bottle. Yes? It's a very reliable source. <laughs> I've been preparing for tonight by practicing very hard. I've been testing it out on uh, family members. Mom, yes, yes. Mom. Pick a card in the garden, garden. Well, I'm... Yeah, well, just, just, I'm take, just take one, take one, take one. He loves Ben and Teller. He's got photos of them in his room. He talks about them at the dinner table. It's kind of a bit annoying, but, I mean, got to live with it. He's really excited about it and about the opportunity to do something in front of, as he sees it, the greatest magicians in the world. They'll be blown away. Um, they'll be speechless, even though one of them already is. I don't think my age will act as a hindrance because they'll realise that I'm quite dedicated to my art and that I really, really want to try and fool them. What a lovely and touching film there, emphasising what you can achieve with the love and support of your brother. It's like watching a young Noel and Liam Gallagher, wasn't it? Will you please welcome the fabulous Mr Daniel Kramer! <laughs> Amazing illusion. I'm going to turn myself into a ten-year-old boy. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you very much. <laughs> I was watching the, uh, the TV the other day and I saw a magician do an amazing trick where he took one, two, three, four, five, six cards. He threw away one, two, three, and yet somehow he still had one, two, three, four, five, six cards. Now, when I first saw this, I was as amazed as you were and I, too, forgot to applaud. Don't stop! Come on! <sighs> right. So, I went down to my local shop, and I said to the man behind the counter, have you got that amazing trick when a magician takes one, two, three, four, five, six cards? He throws away one, two, three, and yet somehow he's still got one, two, three, four, five, six cards left. He said, no, this is the butchers. <laughs> You might want to go next door to the magic shop. So I went next door to the magic shop. I said to the man behind the counter, have you got that amazing trick when a magician takes one, two, three, four, five, six cards, he throws away one, two, three, and yet somehow he still has one, two, three, four, five, six cards left. He said, yes, we do. I said, I'll buy it, please. 
So I bought it, and I've got it with me right now. I'm going to perform it for you today. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> it's the amazing Six God Twitch. Here we go. Mm. I take one, two, three, four, five, six cards. I throw away one, two, three cards, and yet somehow I still have one, two. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six cards left. Thank you. Thank you. Right here is a new invention of mine. Last time I tried it out, it didn't exactly go well, but hopefully it will work tonight. This is the amazing Twister Roo 3179.3142793651235. Five. <laughs> As you can see, my arm goes all the way inside, and if I open this up, you can see my arm is real, correct? Yes, yes. Can so you mind to make sure it's real? Sure. Ah! Ah! <laughs> okay. it's, a, it's a joke. It's a, it's a joke. <laughs> now, what's going to happen is, Jonathan, is you're going to take that portion of the, uh, of the box. Right. And you're going to start twisting it nice and slowly in a sort of uh, a clockwise circular motion, okay. about three times, or until I start screaming out in pain, <laughs> okay. telling you to stop, OK? So I'm going to put my uh, arm in again. Okay. So if you'd like to take that portion of the box and start twisting it on the Ready? count of three. One, two, three, go! Ah, once, ah, twice. Oh. Ah, three times a lady. There we go. I think that's enough. Oh, gosh. Oh, dear. I'd like to just uh, hold that portion of the box. You seem to have... Uh, this didn't happen last time, but you've really hurt me. Oh, my God. Oh, sorry, That's not meant to happen now. Let's try and reverse the process. Okay. Twist it around the other way, if you like. Here we go. Ah, uh, keep going. Uh, twice. Uh, and one more time. Uh, and there we go. And hopefully, my arm is completely wow. back to normal. There we go. Okay, thank you Let's give Pam and Tala a couple of minutes to talk. Have you ever been to Vegas before? I've, I've never been to Vegas. It'll be quite amazing if I, I did. I would so love it if, as a, as a result of the show, we got to send a, a boy of your age to Vegas to fully enjoy it, because I think... <laughs> I think it'd be going to be one hell of an experience for you. Um, <laughs> but you did it all fabulously, and the personality you have on stage and the warmth you give off and the humour, that's a huge selling thing. I mean, that's what people will love to see you doing, I'm sure. So, you know, in a way... In a way, the magic... Is in the best part of the act. You're the best part of the act. And I thought it was great. Congratulations. It was really very fun. Let's see if Ken and Tella have got a clue. You just said something dead wrong. You said the magic wasn't the best part of his act. And I've got to tell you, some of the stuff in there, the more you know, the better it was. The opening trick he did, I have seen Lance Burton, master magician star of his own Vegas show forever. I've seen him do that, we've both seen him do that, and his ending was not as good. Is that ending your own? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another great thing, he's honest, isn't it? That's very rare in show business. You sold that so completely, I was sure that the ending of that was your own, because your acting was just beautiful on it. I also want to say about the, uh, the hand thing you did, what I love about that is you weren't finding some other child to torture, but you did it to yourself. <laughs> so you were the star of the trick and the victim of the trick, <laughs> and I always love that. And I also want to tell you something, uh, Daniel, uh, really from the bottom of my heart. I want you to look right now at these two people sitting right here because that's the path you're on. If you don't like what you see here, <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, I'm, almost, uh, I'm almost a little teary-eyed because we can show you pictures of Teller doing shows when he was your age and it's exactly the same. And I was doing the same stuff when I was 15. I just wasn't quite as good. So <laughs> you did not fool us, but boy, you charmed us. And I'm telling you, you are us. Wow.
Mr. Daniel Kramer, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be hearing more from him on tour. Great job. It was tremendous. It was great. Let's get to know our next contender. Romani. Hi, my name's Romani. I'm a female magician, and I was once quoted as a cross between Bette Midler and Mary Poppins. At 15, the headmistress of my convent school asked me what I wanted to be, and I said I wanted to be a Moulin Rouge feather-clad showgirl, which I just got a disapproving stare, but here I am. I'm influenced by theater and musicals and shows and cabaret and costumes. The Magic Circle made me Stage Magician of the Year, and that was the first woman ever to win that. It's fantastic being one of the very few female magicians in the world, because no one else is doing what I'm doing. I think it's about to get hot in here, and I have to say, I'm so relieved, because I was thinking of wearing that outfit tonight myself, and I'm glad I didn't. Will you please welcome Womany? <laughs> Perform you a very difficult and dangerous trick. I am looking for somebody to tie me up. <laughs> I found him. It is you. Oh, well, thank you very much. How very kind of you. Please tie me up. Oh, okay. Place a double knot upon this wrist. Okay. All right. So a nice double knot, nice and tight. Tight. Okay. <sighs> one and another one. <laughs> Two. <laughs> okay, that's tight. This is tight. And oh. now tie my hands up behind my back. Okay. Very, very tight. Things are looking up. Okay. So. <laughs> one knot and a, two, a double knot again. A double knot. Make sure okay. they're very, very tight. Okay. Two knots. Okay. Good. We need some more rope. More rope. Please pass the rope around my neck and tie very, very tightly, Mr. Ross. Two knots around my neck. So another knot here, okay. Yes. So, oops. So that's one, okay, for sure. And then the other one oh, through there. Perfect. Take no notice, I'm but a fair, frail woman. Two knots right tight Good. around the neck. And now through my arms, please, okay. from the back to the through front. Here. Okay. Then round again, make sure they're tightly okay. bound. Okay. And now tie them in front of my. Oh, okay. This one might take longer. <laughs> <laughs> what are you looking at? I'm not looking at the knot. Okay. <laughs> one. <laughs> Two. Coming up here. Here we go. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh, I got a bit. I got a bit pulled up in my own knot there. Hold on. Okay, there, two, two, two. Good, you got tight. <laughs> and now around my derriere and to the front. Why are we? We're doing upstairs and downstairs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another double knot down here? Yes, and okay, to the well, front. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. I nearly sat on your head. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's, got, I mean, it's done. That's and a... now in front of my legs, nice and tight. Around the front? Yes. Oh, you really are. You're not going to be able to move much. Good. Okay. So, so ladies is... and gentlemen, you can see that I'm thoroughly tied up. Would you agree? <laughs> Who could have known that magic would be such fun? Uh, OK. okay Good. Done. And Sandy can do the rest. Monsieur Ross. Ooh, I'm exhausted. I don't know how people can get do this in the bedroom. I wouldn't have any energy for anything. <laughs> I'd have to send out for someone else. <laughs> Please step into my tunnel of love. OK. We'll see. Okay. Edge forward and now shoulders back, chest out, stomach in, <laughs> cheeks tight. I shall enter in behind you. Oh, dear. I'm coming in. The first. Can you feel my presence? I feel both of them. <laughs> so now, Sandy is going to raise the tongue of love and wiggle it. So are you ready? One, two, three, up. Monsieur Ross, just relax. One... Two, three, and down. Wow. Wow. Well done. Wow, and these are the knots are still in place, and my jackets.
That was quite something. <laughs> if only we had the time, we could keep doing that till one of us was naked. We could, and... Uh, <laughs> you fool rule then, they're the two you've got to worry about. They're going to talk about it now. So I'll cut these off. The knots are still in place, I can yes. see that. Okay, where shall I start? Uh, um, at my neck, please. Oh, okay, be careful now. Okay, <laughs> uh, okay. the front area, the breasticles, okay. <laughs> and, uh, my wrists. Uh, the wrists, okay. No, I think I'm out. And that's I it, you're out of there. Ladies, that wasn't that spectacular. <laughs> Romany! <laughs> what a great performance. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> I'll read off. And I can tell you, I didn't do anything to help that. I didn't take my jacket off, I didn't do no. anything. That was a terrific performance. I don't know whether the guys have worked it out. They look quite content over there, but maybe they they're just enjoying the view. Penn, tell her, do you know how she did it? As far as the rope tie, this was used extensively in spirit cabinets, where people would be tied up like this by a committee from the audience, then put in a cabinet, and it was all done to prove the existence of the spirit world. It's wonderful for it to be done with sexual flirtation instead. Something good <laughs> instead of something evil. It's a variation on the Keller rope tie. I think you recognize that. And then all you need is someone who is compliant and bends to your every whim, like Jonathan Ross. <laughs> it was wonderfully done. Happy to oblige. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, she was fabulous, wasn't she? She didn't fall down, but it was a great act. Woman -y. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you so much. Let's get to know our next contender, ladies and gentlemen. Alan Rorison. My name is Alan Rorison. I am a close-up magician from a little town in Scotland called Port Glasgow. The town can be a little bit rough. If you mess up, someone will happily call you mid-routine just to think they've got one over on you, so you've, you've got to get your chops up quick. <laughs> I've always had a sort of little cheeky cocky thing going on. It's just part of the character and kind of the way this town shaped me <laughs> and the way you need to be to get by. But I prefer to find myself as like a sort of maybe underground desk kind of guy. I don't go to all the magic clubs and stuff like that. I prefer just to hit a bar if I want to try out a new idea and just actually try it on people. Oh, 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 oh. If you're going to do magic, you should be able just to do it with anything. Whatever's lying about, you shouldn't need a special sort of circumstance. <laughs> I'm looking forward to performing for Penn & Teller. It's two magicians I've grew up watching, so it'll be a nice experience actually performing for someone I've looked up to. I mean, basically, all my sort of magic career or life. Mm -hmm. He is a great magician, but part of me thinks he also got booked just so I had to try and say his name. So here we are. Please welcome Mr. Alan Wallison. <laughs> I'd like to invite Mr. Jonathan Ross back on stage. Thank you. Hello. Happy to be here. Decide, decide. Uh, if you can stand there just now, that'd be perfect. And um, it's my first time on here, bud. Do you want me to? Okay. <laughs> you know what? People are watching. They're going to think it's Ant and Dec, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> Trying to say I've got a big forehead. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, I'll let you off. I'll let you off. Right. What I need you to do is, if you could be so gentle as to. Um, just dig in, give them a little mix, and I need you to select out any four you would like. Okay. okay. Take your time, I've got all day. I'm not a proper shuffling person. So any four from here? Any four, yes. The face size don't matter, One, and they're basically just a two, cover. Two, uh, three, three and four. Okay, now, okay. now, that's perfect, thank you. You've right. done your little oh, stand oh, this oh. time. <laughs> On you come, son. There you go. Right, for the next part... <laughs> I really should pick in the big guy, should I? Um, <laughs> for the next part, we are going to need to make a table. Okay. Like a human table. So I will be using you for part of this, and we need one other person. So. From that side you'd like? From any side you like. Okay. If you could grab them, I'll explain what's going to happen. Who would like to do it? Which of the ladies here would like to do it? The lady there. What's your name? Rima. Rima, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> right, now for this, um, I may as well explain the sort of genesis of this for me. Now, most magicians will practice either with cards or coins. I like to practice with both. Um, so it is something I carry around a lot. For this, we also need a nice, big, fluffy mat and a nice, big, hard table. 
And the reason being is we will place the coins out into a nice little sort of square and you cover each one of these up, okay? Now what's going to happen is you start to cover all of these up, you're going to jump everything about. And it works in a very simple manner just like this. If you tap, that will jump. Should be a round of applause, but let's go. It's very, it's all very boring. Now again, all the magician would do is he would do this with all four of these, and he would clink, and everything would jump out of the way. But, no, 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 no. Don't applaud that, don't applaud that, because in this one, you need the cards, you need the coins, you need the big fluffy mat. In fact, the mat's the most important thing. What that lets you do is sneakily put your thumb on things and pick it up as you're picking up with the cards and things like that. You can also slide stuff along. So I decided to try and figure out a way that would get rid of the big fluffy mat, the table, and um, basically everything that we don't need. So what I've decided to do is take the mat and get rid of it. I was aiming for your head there, did I miss it? It's, it's too high for you, isn't it? So... <laughs> <laughs> So to do this, if you can have a wee seat over here, you, you can follow me, my dear, okay. thank you. Just have a little seat there. See you, Rima. Okay. You sit down first, big boy. There you go. <laughs> and what I need you to do is make a human table. Are you aware of how to do this? No, but you I'm going. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shall I...? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> what end am I going at? <laughs> hey, sit down here. Right. If you could be so kind as to put your hands out just like that for me. And I'm going to chuck the label of your tie in. Thank you. That way you won't know it's from Primark, if you could do the same. <laughs> Thank you. And now what we need to do is just place a coin on each. Now, I need to make sure it's tail side up or my OCD will go mental. <laughs> and we also need the cover. Yes. So the cover, again, would be our little cards. Mm -hmm. Now, again, it's going to work the exact same way, but if I try and slide this now, it will obviously fall and hit the floor. Okay. In fact, can you put your hand down a bit? I told you I'm not that tall. Perfect. That one there. Uh, there we are. And again, if I try and do it now, this means if I tap this one with that card and that one with that card, you should both be able to feel everything happen. Wow. Now, I'll let you feel both. Because your hand is the receiving and the only one here, we'll try and let you feel both of these. So if you just click, you should be able to feel both as it jumps. Now leaving three over here. And for the very last one, let me just try and see if I can do this. You can pop it and it will jump all the way over. Why don't we, uh, we can still use the chairs. We'll let Penn and Teller confer that for a bit. Now, I've known Penn and Teller on and off for about 20 years, and it's only in the last six months or so that Penn has started understanding me most of the time. Yeah. As you say, <laughs> we, uh, for him, when we're speaking now, for him, what he hears is... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what he's completely actually. different language. It's like two ducks sitting out there in front of him, as far as he's concerned. <laughs> I think you're in with a pretty good chance. I'm going to ask... I'm going to jump in now, I think. We just have to ask you one question. And uh, if we're wrong about this, you have fooled us. We're not going to try to sneak in a second guess because we don't have a second guess. <laughs> uh, if we don't know this, you fooled us. Would you just hold your hands up like this and just tell us, just honestly, I guess, could you do that routine exactly the same if you took off all your jewelry? What jewelry are you um, pretending to? Rings. Bang on, bud. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have to add, he he also fooled me. He fooled you. It was another teller one. Wow. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. And Lawson, ladies and gentlemen, great performance. Well done. Thanks to him. It's time for us to meet our next magician. Richard Bellas. Hi, I'm Richard Bellas. Uh, I've been doing magic for 22 years. The uh, type of magic I perform is a mixture of either close-up, sleight of hand, or mind control. If you can imagine the Artful Dodger learn how to do magic, that's pretty much my style. Uh, last one's on the show, I got royally busted, mainly because I used an off-the-shelf trick. I was cheeky, I had a bit of fun. First of all, the whole study of psychology and implanting 
thoughts in people's heads is bullshit. bullshit. And this time it'll be different when I bring the best I've got to the table. Richard's been really excited about performing again. He's been working literally day and night. I came up with the idea for this routine in a dream I had. He'll get up in the middle of the night sometimes with a bright idea. I knew the dream and all the bits and pieces of the dream would make up this routine. I just had to figure out how to sew it all together and how to make it into what it's become now. He can't wait. And this time I will for Penn and Teller. To try and fool Penn and Teller once is brave. To come back and try and do it again is verging on insanity. So please welcome the very nearly mad Richard Bellows. <laughs> It was quite clear last time we met, you burnt me pretty bad. <laughs> and I deserved it, I didn't try hard enough. Um, and it haunted me for a while until I had a dream of a routine that I could do to you guys should we meet again. And so clear was a dream that I went out and placed a bet on the outcome. And that's where this case comes in. Teller, would you mind looking after this for me? Uh, placing it on your chair. And could you both join me up on stage? That'd be great. Give me a hand, guys. Put in Teller. And also I'll need Jonathan as our referee. Uh, the dream basically raised one question, which was who would win in the challenge between Penn and Teller? We know you work perfectly as a team. I want to know who's the actual talent. So I devised a couple of challenges. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping one of them is wrestling. <laughs> I can change it, I can change it. So, uh, the first challenge is uh, darts. Have you played before? I've thrown darts, but I've yeah, never yeah. played. Yeah, yeah, OK, well, come on over. John, if you can stand here. Uh, come on over, guys. What we have, uh, circuit of board, 62 mm -hmm. different sections of scoring. Uh -huh. Our rings double, inner rings treble, the yes. bullseye's worth 50, and so on. Uh, you're going to get three darts each. Mm -hmm. Highest score wins. You're going to go first. OK. So, those are your darts. OK. As we say in darts, it's game on. Jonathan will keep score. Good luck. Going for the high score, right? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Maybe I should tell you after what I'm going for. <laughs> <laughs> one. Good. Wow. I was going for Taylor, a, I'm a going triple, for you, triple, triple one. 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 Uh, that's 14, oh, one. so you got 15. 15. Oh. And that is in the... Uh, is that, what's that? Is that 19? Yes. So that's uh, 34. 34, give it a hand. 34. 34. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I'll get those for you. We're running out of chalky stuff. Good luck. Are we good? OK, uh, 34 to beat. You can do it with one die if you're good enough. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. OK, that's, that's on the board. You're playing American rules. Is that <laughs> <it>? <laughs> oh, triple. just outside the triple 13. You've got to get a double or a treble. Or a ball. Another 13, 26. 26. Got... Uh, give me a hand, guys. That's a great yeah. score. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes! The second game is more about using your mind, so really it should be more up your street. No offence. Um, <laughs> so this is like a really weird edition of the Generation game, isn't it? <laughs> we hope so. Uh, we'll come over to Challenge 2, guys, which is over here. Um, I don't know which one you stand. I know you stand on particular sides, but pen okay, on this yeah, side, tell on this side. What you have... You've got to think, you've got 20 seconds to think of a six-letter word. Then take the letters and pop it up on there. A six-letter word. Six-letter word. Take your time, but the audience are going to decide who's his best by cheering the loudest. OK, so that's down 20 to 20 seconds. 20 seconds, starting from now. Go. And I'm, I'm, I have no idea what word they're going to go for, and um, you're going to be the judge. So I'll who's judge loudest. from so, the cheers yes. as to which word you think is the best. <laughs> that's looking good. Hey, no cheating. So he does first. That's Housey. Housey. <laughs> Who thinks toilet is the better word? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Oh, okay. there's, a, there's a lot of love for toilet in the room. <laughs> for Housey. Who likes Housey better? <laughs> it's, it's toilet all the way. Yes. Well, well, give it a hand. He won that round. He's just there. So that's one all. Come no, no. back in the middle, guys. Uh, tell if you join me here. Pen, if you could stand here for me. Uh, there was a winner. 
in my dream. So we've got to decide this, who's going to be our, our champion. So we'll do it how grown men should. Rock, paper, scissors. OK. OK? OK, OK, you've got to put your hand behind your back and you've got to either do scissors, rock, rock or paper, paper, scissors. On three, not after three. OK. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three. Oh, 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 there you go. So Teller wins paper over rock. Paper wins rock, beats rock every time. Teller is our winner. What we did was to have a prediction, which you couldn't see the whole way through, but were you guys watching? No one went over there and so on. OK, would you mind bringing that prediction up to the table? And one more time, guys, can you give it up for Teller, our winner? Perfect. Could you please click those open for me? I don't want to touch the locks. Uh, inside here is something that you'll need in just a second. Only? Pick that up for me. Oh, I don't like where this is heading. <laughs> well, if he's managed to get it up there, he is a magician. <laughs> No, I did keep it in a very safe place, so I'll uh, just. Would you? Would you like me to put on a German accent? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, a little bit. Uh, no, here's the idea. Um, I kept it in my shoe, and I, 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 I was a bit nervous. I was a bit sweaty. I want you to go in after it. Okay. Okay. So let everyone see. I'm going to take this off very fairly. If you could, there. Just pick that up and show them the laces, and they can see inside. Uh, tip it up the other oh, way. Oh man! Inside there is a piece of paper. There is. And I want you to be very fair when you open that. I have in my hands a piece no of No funny paper. biz. OK. That's quite hard. I, I kind of predicted what would happen okay. if you guys played darts, if you guys did some words. Uh, oh. The dart score, what did we get? OK, I'm going to fold it over for maximum oh, okay, sure. suspense. If you can see that there, it says darts, pen scores 34, teller scores 26. Thank you very much. And, 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 and over here we have uh, two words that we've done. Pen's word, Robert, okay. on If I move down, it's, it says words. Pen's word, housey. Housey. Teller's word, toilet. toilet. Thank you. But then it was a draw, so we had to do paper, rock, scissors, and Teller, you won the tiebreak. It's at the bottom. Teller wins. I guess Teller dreams wins. do come true. I'll collect my winnings. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm hoping some people who weren't Magic fans maybe tuned in, saw some darts, thought, great darts, I'm going to stay for that. <laughs> How confident are you? Do you think you fooled them? I think I've done all I can to fool them. Whether I have or not is, is up to them. Okay, but we'll I couldn't have done it any now. better. Pen, don't just ignore me. I'm not going away. I'm ignoring you. We've got work to do. You've got to... No, you've this got to do This was hard. We were on stage, It's dude. hard. That's the whole point. It's meant to be hard. Come on. Eyes front. Teller's still thinking. Either that or he's got some wind. Guys! <laughs> enough time, girls. Okay. I'm going to have to push you. Uh, what we have, the reason it took so long is because we're having trouble. And we are not by any means sure how it's done. I believe you wrote the prediction yourself. And I believe you used a some variation on a little thing that allows you to write in your hand secretly. Mm. And I think you're really, really good at it. Teller thinks you couldn't possibly be that good at using that gimmick. We both believe that the prediction went from your right pocket down your leg and loaded into the shoe. I did not write it, I'll be honest about that. But I also did not cop it and I did not use my pocket at all. Did not use your pocket at all? It never went down his leg. Then you, sir, even more than we thought, <laughs> Fooled us. Yes! yes!
That's great. You're going to Vegas, Richard Bell. Oh. Tonight we have seen some tremendous acts and one person is going to Vegas. That's who's going to Las Vegas. Incredible performance. Ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for me to evacuate the stage and make way for two of the biggest talents in magic today. So to close tonight's show, something that will definitely fool you as well as me. Will you please welcome Penn and Atella. <laughs> The, uh, and the people in the studio here can tell that much, but people at home can certainly tell that because we're live performers, you might notice that I tend to look toward the back when I'm performing and when I'm talking to all of you, and that's because I have astonishingly bad eyesight. See, if I'm sitting right up here in the front, like right down here, still looks like I'm watching on TV. So I always experience every show, no matter where I'm sitting, I always experience it kind of vicariously. Uh, well, what's your name, please, ma'am? Bex. Bex, right up here. Would you please, Bex, right up here on stage, please? I'm gonna bring, I'm bringing you up here for a couple of reasons here, <laughs> Bex. One reason is, a lot of times, people sitting in the back don't think they're ever gonna even see someone who's sitting right down here in front. This is Bex, she's in the third row. That's what the people up front look like, right here. That's <laughs> Bex right there. Yeah. And I uh, also wanted to give you an opportunity to meet Teller. He looks about 10 pounds heavier on TV, but all the same, that's tough. I'm gonna bring you out right over here, Bex. Uh, one of the things that I noticed when I got close to you is you're wearing glasses that are very fashionable and very attractive. Uh, uh, are those just worn for fashion, or are they also corrective? No, they're corrective. They're corrective? Yeah. And just forgive me for a second, would you just take them off for a second? I just wanna take a look at them. Oh, these are beautiful. I love the, I love the black and white, and, and so clean, Bex. Your, <laughs> your ocular hygiene is astonishing. That's, that's, I gotta talk to you about that, because my, my glasses, I've looked like I just cleaned them off of the beef patty. But these are, uh, <laughs> these are beautiful. And I, I don't want to get personal, Bex, but are you nearsighted or farsighted? Uh, farsighted. Farsighted. So if I'm, if I'm close enough to you, like, you can see me without them a little bit? Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll just put these right here, Bex, where they'll be safe. <laughs> now, uh, now, Bex, with you on stage, you can feel the whole tone of the audience changes. Because the audience trusts you in a way they couldn't possibly trust me, okay? For instance, if you were not on stage and I were to reach into my pocket and pull out a billiard ball and just state, this is a billiard ball, some people wouldn't believe me. They won't believe for a few reasons. One reason is they sell billiard ball shells that are used for billiard ball manipulation acts. You pull up, they sell collapsible billiard balls. And also they wouldn't believe me because, Bex, I am a liar. <laughs> so if you weren't up here, if you demonstrate that it's a real billiard ball, I might do that by going over here and just <laughs> tapping like this. Now with you on stage, Bex, I don't have to do that, but I still do it because it annoys Teller and that brings me joy. So with you on stage, Bex, all I have to do is have you examine, and it's really important, examine that billiard ball clearly, would you please? We're also gonna use this uh, magic wand. Teller, you're not facing it, just bring it here. We're also gonna use that magic wand. And Bex, is that a real billiard ball? Yeah. And is this a real magic wand? Who cares, Bex? And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, see, this is where it's better to be in the audience is to be right up here, because in the audience, this looks kind of groovy. But up here, this is clearly just a dowel covered with shelf paper and some adhesive tape and bitten off by one of our magic guys, yeah. Zeke. But all the same, <laughs> these are the props we're gonna be using, Bex. Now, I'm gonna tap this three times. On the third time, it's gonna vanish, okay, Bex? Okay. Now, am I in your sweet spot? Can you see okay? Can you yeah, see all right from where we are? Good, yeah. I just wanna make sure we your right side. <laughs> here we go, Bex. And one, two, three. <laughs> What was that, Bex? About, about two seconds? Second? Yeah, second? But for like that second, you were filled with like full body Disney wonder, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then you glanced up here and the waveform collapsed and went to yeah. abject disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> but fortunately for everyone involved, this is a two person performing ensemble. And Teller is much better than I am. So you watch the rest of this trick, you can pretty much ignore me. It doesn't matter at all. But keep your eyes on Teller. Stare at him carefully. Put your glass. Oh no, Bex. One of two things has happened. 
Either your glasses have really, truly vanished, or I no longer care about breaking them. <laughs> so, you say it was, you said it was about a second I fooled you? Is that right? About a second you said I fooled you? Is that what you said? About a second I fooled you? This might fool you a little longer, Bex. Now, Bex, I don't expect you to be able to see that far without your glasses. But, Bex, are those your glasses right there, Bex? Go over there, pluck them off Kelly's face. Put them on your own face. Are those your glasses, Bex? I may have soiled them. Please clean them off of this a little bit. Thank you so much. Please watch the stuff. That's Bex there, Bex! Tara, ladies and gentlemen, fabulous! Wow, nice work, great stuff, right there. Ken and Tara. See you next time as once again we try and fool them on Fool Us. Good night, everybody. Thanks for watching.